cool stories about what he's done. And so Becca, Becca, um, just a little bit about Becca. Uh, she's awesome. Um, the Lord has done a good work in and through her. And uh, she has a sensitivity and, and a love for Christ that's really contagious. And she's all about serving God. Uh, I don't know a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning or in between where I'm not knowing that you're serving Christ. And it's pretty powerful. So she's going to share how she came to Christ, but what also Christ has been doing in and through her since she came to Christ. So here you go. Everybody give it up for Miss Becker. Hey guys. Um, how are, are you guys comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, as Lewis said, I'm just going to share a little bit about my testimony and what, how God's been working in my life. So, um, I was raised in a Christ-centered home, and at the age of seven, I asked Jesus in my heart with um, a prayer led by my mom one night in my bed. And I feel like that was a really good starting point for me um, and my walk with God. But I'm going to share more testimonies of how God has caused me to grow in Him. So, on that note, this past year, I have struggled a lot with like my thoughts and just worries and anxieties. Um, I never really knew how, like, your thought life can overcome you and overtake you if you're not thinking on thoughts from God. So, um, but I'm extremely thankful to have a loving, godly family, and especially my mom. I always knew I could go to her and talk to her for any uh, sound advice or counsel um, she would give me. And so one of the things she encouraged me to do is to think on whatever is true, honorable, noble, just, right, pure, lovely. Um, that comes from Philippians 4 eight, and one of the ways that really helped me and one of the ways you can do that is to memorize and meditate and study God's word and just to recite it in your head because when you're when you're reciting and thinking on what God has said and done that leaves no room for fear or anxiety or what um, any attacks from the enemy so that was one thing and also my mom encouraged me to spend quiet time with God each morning in his word and prayer and worship and I cannot tell you how much this has made a difference um, Ever since I started doing that, just spending time with God, um, my journal has, has just been filled with testimonies of how he's been speaking to me and his grace. So I'm just going to share a few of those with you, and then I'll close up. But So a lot of times God will give me a scripture, um, like, multiple times within a few days. Um, and one of those was Psalm 139 last month, and he just kept showing it to me, like, in a video, and also in a book I was reading, and a few other times, so... After that, I, was, I felt prompted by God to start memorizing that song, so I'm going to share with you um, at the end what I know. Um, but also, I just want to share this story. Um, about a week ago, I was reading Hebrews 12, 2, and I didn't exactly know what this phrase in it meant. I thought I pretty much understood the verse, but this one phrase I wasn't quite sure of, so I just asked God, God, what does that mean? I just asked him, and I don't do that a lot, but I did. And I kind of moved on with my day and forgot about it, but... A few days later, I was sitting in church, and Pastor Lewis was preaching the message, and he was talking about that exact verse and phrase that I just asked God about what it meant, and I was like, wow, Lord, thank you for not forgetting about my question by answering me, because I knew that God always hears our prayers, and he listens to us, and I believe that, but just to have him answer it in that way brought a whole new level of encouragement and excitement. So that was one of the stories I want to share. Also, I feel like God sometimes speaks to me through my dreams. Because about a year ago, I had a dream that one of the ladies in our church was pregnant, and she had never had a baby before, and I had no way of knowing that she was, but a few weeks later, she announced that she was going to have a baby, and I was like, wow, Lord, thank you for um, showing that to me. That was another huge encouragement of how God speaks to me. Um, so, sorry, let me just find my place here. Um, also, probably about a year ago, I was sitting in prayer room, we go to a prayer meeting weekly, and... I was reading Matthew 7, and specifically these verses about the wide and narrow path, and right after I read those verses, one of the ladies started praying that verse out loud, and my mom also said she had been thinking about um, that passage, so I'm just going to read it to you real quick. It's Matthew 7, 13 to 14, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So basically what this, these verses are saying is that we're in a world that has plenty of distractions all around us, and a lot of people are on the wide path, but God is calling us to resist those tem temptations, and to stay on the straight path with Him, and listen to His voice. So, um, the list could go on of what God's been showing me, but my point is, especially to you kids, is that God really is there, and He cares about each and every one of you, and He desires to have a relationship with you, 
Um, and so just call on his name. Tell him your thoughts, your concerns, your anxieties, because he wants to hear you and he will listen to you because he promises that in his word. Also, Psalm 103 says, As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. God desires to be your father and to have that intimacy with you. And if you respond to this call, you won't return dry or empty. You'll be full and satisfied with his grace. Um, so, and just as a side note, um, this doesn't mean I don't struggle anymore. It's a battle every day, but I'm extremely thankful that God has given me his armor to put on and his word to use to combat the enemy's attacks. So, my, oh, I also want to show you this. My small group leader gave me this book, Jesus Calling, which is part of my quiet time. It's just a few paragraphs you read and then verses that you look up. It's really encouraging, so I encourage all of you to do that. And so my final words to you would be, um, get to know God more and respond to his call and just let the Holy Spirit move in your life. Um, spend time with him because, again, you won't return dry, but you'll be full and satisfied with his grace. So I'm going to close with Psalm 139, 1 through 14. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, oh, Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall hold me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Psalm 139, 1-14. Thank you. That's what the Lord does. He meets us exactly.